Hi, Dr. Karim. Hello, Dr. Karim. Hello, uh, how are you, gentlemen? Nice to have you on the show. Thank Please you. We're very good. good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Pleasure, pleasure. Please introduce so the, so the audience can know, know who we have now, now on, on the show today. Okay, well, I'm Daniel Ancliffe, CEO and uh, founder of Your Block. And I'm Ernest Spicer, Chief Technological Innovation Officer of Your Block. Nice to meet you too. Your, you block, your block sounds very, very interesting. Tell us, what is it? Um, well, let me ask you a question, Dr. Krim. Have you got a drawer at home where you keep your car insurance, your home insurance, your bank statements, your passport, all of those important documents? You may be well organized and have it in a file, but a lot of people just throw all of those sorts of bills in a drawer and uh, forget about them until uh, such time as they need them. Absolutely. You, I think you know the answer to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anybody who runs a house or, yeah, uh, probably has all those bills. So the idea will take all of the information on those pieces of paper and those emails and PDFs you get uh, every month or annually uh, and put all of that very important data within a secure blockchain-based um, platform. Um, and then through being able to hold all of that data, we'll then work with commercial partners and be able to quote you when the time is due for renewal of your home, your car insurance, um, products uh, and services that we hope will be cheaper and a better product. Not just looking at the price, but looking at the hidden costs uh, within certain products and services. Um, which it, it, that's more on the side of looking at it from a machine learning and the AI element to help the consumer be able to make a more informed decision on the products and services that they need to run their lives on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis throughout the year to manage the household. I believe so. So this is like a global problem you're trying to solve here. It's not, not, a, dom not a domestic problem. Yeah, we, we see it as a global problem. Data, um, as you're probably aware, with all of the news around how important data is, um, we, we see that consumers should now be able to take ownership of their data. Um, and for the, the big commercial companies, as they hold your data, and they don't do a very good job of looking after it. They monetize the consumer. Uh, they make a lot of money from your data. Even if you've opted out, there are a lot of companies that will sell it on uh, and make uh, money from you and and then you as a consumer are bombarded with emails and mail uh, and harassed in a way uh, to purchase more products that you probably don't need so yeah we, we think the consumer now should own their data and that you should become anonymous to those products and service providers you should just become a policy number Exactly. And how, when, when did you start thinking that blockchain can solve, solve this? Um, but me personally, I started to look at blockchain for, for looking at storing data um, around three, four years ago. But the developers I was talking to at the time were saying it's more transactional. It's not for the data, not for storing large amounts of data. Uh, but then talking with people like Ernest, um, who's yeah, got a great understanding of how we can develop this out. Um, that was around two years ago now. So, yeah, th that was the time we thought it was it was ready to move it onto a blockchain-based platform and to put a tokenized mechanism around it to give you that utility token that then you'll be able to use to get discount on uh, your car insurance, your home insurance. And through creating that ecosystem with a tokenized mechanism, we hope the consumer will stay on the platform and then it becomes a real utility token. Uh, obviously people will speculate and go to the secondary market if they, if they hold a lot of tokens or they can uh, pass them on to other members in the family. But yeah, we, we'd like to keep them on the platform and once they get the car, car insurance, uh, they'll be rewarded back with more YBK tokens and then they may say, well now I'll go and get my home insurance and then they might go and get the gas and electric bills sorted, TV and broadband, all of those services. So. Yeah, I see. Actually, I had similar similar discussion earlier today with some investors. We are hosting an investor forum here in Oslo these days, and one of the investors asked me exactly this question: How can I see a token is good or 
bad, which, which ICO should I invest in? And I answered like this, if you see that the token will be a, a, a key part of the future of this platform or the business built around it, then this token will hold its value and it will increase and will, 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 will live. If this token is just a speculation thing and it will die after the ICO, then, then your money is down the train. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, we see it that the you know the value of the token it should be looked at to what you can benefit as a consumer to get you know sixty pounds off your car insurance or eighty pounds off your uh, gas and electric bill on a quarterly basis. It's it's that kind of thing, and through mass adoption, then it gives us more leverage as well with the commercial partners to for them to understand that we've got a big user base and they can. They know they're going to get consumers, so they could lower their tariffs for us. So you get a double sort of discount because we've got many users and then they've got the token as well to get a discount. So there's, we hope to create a really good ecosystem that the token uh, becomes a real, well, it is, it's essential to the platform. I see. Can you get a little bit more technical? How you will be using the blockchain to, to, to really uh, do this, this data? Uh, uh, I want us to understand it a little bit more. Okay, uh, in the past seven months, tokens have really taken a, a very nice evolution. Uh, we went from the ERC-20s in Ethereum to what I consider the building block of metadata, which is the ERC-721s, and even they're outdated now. But when we saw the, pass the passing of the 721s, we saw that they're now capable for fungible and non-fungible, but it can also house data at the exact same time. So now Ethereum has a true decentralized ability to transfer large amounts of data and to keep certain fields and certain things out, such as your name, your address, your phone number, but still be able to process some of that risk data to the receipt on the other side. So wherever you're purchasing from still has the ability to calculate certain types of data, but they don't know it's you. So yeah, they're still able to see who their policy holders, risk analysis and things like that are, but they can attach it to you and monetize you, see your history for the past five years and decide that they wanna personally jack your policy up. And we're working with a, a newer type of technology. It, it's not very well known right now, but we're hoping to launch it in the middle of next year and that's linkable ring signatures. Uh, currently, Ethereum is saying that they're going to get it done with Mobius. Uh, I've currently been working on linkable ring signatures since 2017, long before Ethereum. And we want to use the Hyperledger system. The Hyperledger creates private blockchains, and you can actually have multiple ledgers and have them communicate across one another. You don't have to use Ethereum and Plasma and sharding. You know, they're, they're, they're struggling to keep up. It's, it's unfortunate, but Ethereum does have contracts. And now with Burrow and Fabric, you can use Ethereum contracts on Hyperledger. So you don't have to use their platform for the distribution of the contract whatsoever. And Hyperledger is definitely a huge technological advancement right now. Fabric is running very well. Uh, getting into the mobile platforms, you've got Aroha. Uh, you've got Sawtooth for Enterprise. I mean, you've got a whole just list of things that you can use with IBM and with this exceptional peer-to-peer -peer network that's covered for enterprise blockchain. And that's the direction we're going. I understand. So you, 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 are, you are trying to, to, to get ahead of Ethereum, maybe to, to find a solution to the, the problems they are stuck with and, and they know that it will take time for them to, to, to solve. But we're already ahead of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but this is a kind of a risk also for a token buyer or an investor. Once people see that there will be a lot of technology breakthroughs and a lot of uh, uh, difficult issues to solve, you know, the capital is a little bit coward. They want to, 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 to always invest on the easy ways. How, why do you take this risk? It's not a risk for us. Uh, with the technology, last year, myself and some of my colleagues created a multiple instance transaction. So 
you know, while everybody's worrying about speculation, they're worried about the Ethereum price, they're worried about Bitcoin, Litecoin, all that other stuff, we can run a contract with two coins at the same time. So we can run Ethereum and YBK at the same time. We can run Ethereum and Bitcoin. We can run any instance and have that data calculate over. We want to focus on function. Like we don't want speculation to run the price of our token as well as other tokens. We want to build a platform people are going to use as an application, not as I want to get rich off of a coin. We want them to be able to see that they're going to benefit from the usage of your block, that they're going to be able to find savings and all these other things. We don't want them to think, okay, well, if I'm going to use this platform, I've got to think about Ethereum dropping 50 bucks tomorrow. That's fine. YBK can go into Bitcoin. It can go into Litecoin. It can go into anything. The Ethereum contracts are just because it's a good, stable platform with the advancements of Engine and everybody else. Those contracts really have nothing to do with the speculation value. It's just a transfer of data. And if we see one coin go down, well, then we can help point them in the right direction so that they don't lose their value in whatever the kind of coins they have in their wallet. It's really a pleasure to, to see somebody really know what, what knows what they are doing these days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, 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 the ICO landscape is full of uh, what I call shitty ICOs and really they are taking a lot of the energy and the, the focus from the real, the real industry. The real, we've, uh, yeah, we've had many discussions about the frustrations with uh, a lot of the ICOs, you know, we can't see the function in them and, and you know, we hope that uh, investors and just the consumer themselves, they, you've got to look past blockchain and all of that when you're looking at the consumer, the user base, you know, a lot of our everyday people who will be using the platform will probably not be aware that they're using blockchain and a, and a tokenized crypto value. Uh, it'll just become part of every day. But as an investor, you know, that, that should be valuable to an investor because that'll create mass adoption. When people don't know the, the tech and everything behind it, they just use it. That's because it's functional. And that's what we hope the platform will be, uh, something that people will use every day and uh, interact with on a daily basis because that's what makes the product great if it's one of those that you're using, it's helping you in your day-to-day -day life, uh, and it makes a change. Uh, and saves you money, gives you better products, and you've, uh, you know, through uh, the chat bot element, there's so many layers to it as well. It's not just the blockchain element, it's the AI, machine learning, all the other great things that we think we can bring to the table as well, um, that a lot of people overlook. Um, yeah, we're excited about it. Absolutely. Lovely, lovely. Okay, can you tell a little bit about the team of, of uh, your team and how 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 they they uh, handle the, the, these challenges? Uh, well, uh, myself and uh, the sort of founders and Ernest, we we've I'm uh, from a background of uh, twenty years of finance and uh, insurance, and um, our CFO is my father. He's uh, seventy next year. He's been a financial advisor and an accountant for a long time um, he works in the insurance sector so he's massively aware of compliance and uh, regulation and all of those sorts of things uh, I've got my brother who's the chief marketing officer he owns a successful data marketing company in the UK which is it's threatened at the minute because of GDPR and all of the new regulations around data uh, and then we've got other members of the team who we've just all come together from different areas of business as well that's I think one thing that's missing in the ICO world and Ernest is technology and he's very good with business and that's what uh, a lot of ICOs are missing there's some great techie people uh, but you've got to remember this is about running a business as well you know we're, we're constantly uh, looking at the for business forecasting and planning and modeling of, of running a business uh, and the infrastructure you need to, to take care of that business because that's got to work above the technology as well uh, on a day-to-day -day basis you know make sure you've got good lawyers and all of those sorts of things which we think we've got a, a very broad spectrum within the team to cover the areas and we, we are old wise and have been doing it a long time uh, it's not our first what trip round the park so to speak with yeah it hopefully we can uh, keep this going and make a successful business at the end of the day 
could believe you. And then it's really good to hear that somebody is thinking of it, of, of, of this as a business and the business after the ICO, because so many of the ICOs we see out, out there, they are so focused on the ICO itself and the fundraising, and there is nothing after that, like the world will, will end when they raise the funds. Where is the company? Where is the business? And you, you don't hear it. So I'm yes. happy to hear it from you. So, but again, the, the ICO itself also is very important because people will watch us now and will, will wonder about the key numbers and the economics of, of your, your project. So let, let's go through this, the soft cap, hard cap and all this. Tell people about it also. Okay, so we've got a soft cap of uh, $2 million. Uh, the YBK token is valued at 50 cents. Um, and we've got a hard cap of $15 million. Now, um, a good portion of the hard cap is development, but a lot of it is then the marketing, uh, because we're going to try and obviously break through to the UK first, and while we're moving into the UK market, um, which just to give you some numbers on the UK, as an aggregator, the, if you know the UK comparison market, it's uh, a big market. Uh, in 2017, 12 million consumers purchased their car insurance through uh, a comparison website and the comparison website charged on average around 50 pounds uh, commission so that's in excess of 600 million pounds worth of commission just on the car insurance side then you've got energy and gas switching which i think was around 8 million consumers switched their gas and electric through a comparison website uh, an average of 30 pounds commission so that's another 250 million pounds worth of commission so it's a big business that we're we're looking to push into and these comparison websites are spending around two to 2.5 million pounds a month on marketing so our 15 million hard cap you know will make a small dent on the marketing side but we feel because what we're trying to do with the new technology blockchain and protecting consumers we can put a new spin on it from a marketing angle and i think so not just the UK, but the world's ready for a, a different way of managing the data and accessing commercial partners. But the other side is we also see a great play that we can help commercial partners uh, because now they have to have such a large infrastructure to manage personal data with chief data officers and the risk that they could be fined under GDPR regulations, which are, is um, a £20 million pound fine or 4% uh, fine of your gross over. So we see the market that we're potentially going after, not just uh, the UK market, but the worldwide market that we can make a difference and hopefully protect both the consumer and the commercial partner uh, going forward. Uh, and yeah, create something different. I think both consumer and commercial are ready for it. I think so. So where, where your company will be uh, located? after you finish the well, ICO? We're currently based in uh, Gibraltar, but we are we will be looking to um, move uh, offices into America uh, and possibly Asia, around Singapore. Um, so yeah, and with the UK market, we'll have an office in the UK as well because a lot of the team are based in the UK. So yeah, we've got, we've got ideas to expand. Excellent, excellent. Okay, just a brief summary of the timeline, uh, especially for the ICO, when the sales will start or did it start yet? Um, we've been, we've had, uh, we're, we're currently suspended because of the market conditions. We thought it uh, best, best to hold uh, and suspend spend the main sale while we just were redesigning the website to freshen it up both myself and Ernest are here in Washington DC uh, working on the MVP uh, and so we think within the next weeks it'll be maybe the open up again and hopefully the markets will come back a little bit and a bit more confidence and uh, yeah it, the timing's everything in this I think uh, and confidence is required we know that and you've got to you know I've always said uh, and Ernest has that we'll talk to everybody uh, if we need to face to face or via chat and explain what we're trying to do because then it comes across um, our passion and uh, what we really want to do and it's difficult to put that uh, that emotion and passion into a white paper or even an MVP it's nice to see things moving and clicking around but you have to talk to people who are in the business and understand it to get a real feel for what we're trying to achieve in this space so 
yeah, it's uh, we're excited and we just keep moving forward. I totally agree with you. So, and I, I also urge people to talk to you personally and to, to get in, in depth with the project. I find this project really very interesting and it satisfies my, my technical hunger. I like to see substance in, in the concepts and I, I like to see people trying to change, uh, change things in, in the way crypto is working and how problems are solved. So there is more in this project than just tokens and token sales and speculation on a token price. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot more to it. There's you know real people, a real business, and real passion and drive for for more than just the speculation and you know the, the element of making money. We, we, we do want to make a change uh, it, and get mass adoption. You know, this is the future. So you have to make it easy for people, the everyday consumer. You know, it's, it's great for us who are fans of technology and how it moves and advance, but a lot of consumers don't have the time or, or the will to follow technology. But we want to put it in their hands and make it easy for them. Uh, and then through that, they'll get an appreciation for it. Absolutely. I think every everyone who is trying to solve a real real life problem and finding finding a solution using the blockchain and the crypto, we we are coming closer to mass adoption. This is what we need. More and more problems to be solved using this wonderful technology we at last found, and then uh, you will see the whole world will be using it at the end. We we just need to keep going and not to focus on this speculation of the prices. More more focus on what we are really creating here, the technology, the the value we are adding to the world. This is this is our focus. Yeah, definitely. You know, if we could, we, we it'd be nice to get you know three hundred thousand people putting ten dollars in, and and then you've got mass adoption from the start, uh, and it helps us create the business. But you know, that's 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 the ideal. Uh, I, I think they will come and, ma and many more. We, I, I have seen weaker ICOs do do better. So you're, this this is a, a really a, a locomotive. This is a real thing. This is a Ferrari between the ICOs. Also, I am I'm encouraging people to take a look look at this excellent ICO and understand what's really in it because it's 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 really uh, it's really a very good investment. We appreciate all of yeah, and and from our side, Dr. Krim, we appreciate all the work you're doing. Uh, you know, for not just us as an ICO, for the the whole blockchain element and pushing the the word out because you know that's what's required. It it needs it's an educational piece as well, making sure people are well informed and educated on what what is happening in the world and this technology and and how it could make a difference and to be part of it in a small part is is really exciting true true and we are all learning from each other and i've learned a lot to tonight this so this was a wonderful uh, discussion really appreciated we are a little yeah. bit running out of time so I, I, it was a pleasure having you here and i hope that everyone will take a look we will put the the links to the ico and the, the website under the the video so people can find their way to you Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you for having us this evening. Thank you. Um, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.